Hey y'all, Data Guy here, back with a, another video, uh, this time showing you how you can execute data quality checks within a Postgres database. Um, so I've done this for Snowflake, uh, but a lot of people like my Postgres content. I get a lot of Postgres uh, requests, so I figured why not show you how you can implement data quality checks in Postgres, right? Um, so in keeping with my recent formats of the videos, I'm gonna take you all the way to start from building your Airflow environment out and installing the proper packages, all the way to building the DAG. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do here is open up a new terminal window. Um, and then we're going to CD into desktop, data guy, and then make directory Postgres DQ, CD Postgres, and then astro dev init. And this will create all the files we need. Um, and then we can open up that folder. So guy Postgres DQ. Um, and we have our Airflow, new Airflow repository over here on the right or left. So there's not a ton of different requirements and things we'll need to customize here, but there are a few essential ones. Um, and those are going to be the Postgres and common SQL providers. Um, so we'll save these and then we are good to go. Um, so this is just running on the latest version of Airflow. Um, actually, the only other thing we're going to need to do, and I'll drop a link for if you want to download this description, is add some data into our include directory um, that we'll actually just be using as kind of sample data. Um, so I'm going to just be using the regular Postgres backend within Airflow. So I'll show you how to set up a connection to that. Um, and that's really all we need. So now we can go start building our DAG and I can show you actually how you can implement some of these data quality checks within Postgres. Um, so here, uh, DQ Postgres, hi, and then start building our DAG. So the first things we're gonna to need to do as with all of our, ta our DAGs <laughs> is install some libraries. So we're bringing the DAG, task, task group, chain, just for designing our DAG. Uh, then we're bringing in the date time as always in the Postgres operator and the SQL column check operator and the SQL table check operator. Um, so these are how we're actually going to execute our data quality checks. Um, so SQL column check operator allows you to perform checks on the columns uh, and the table check allows you to perform them at the table level. Um, there's also the row check. There's just a generic SQL check. Um, within these common SQL operators. So if you're thinking, oh, well, I wanna look at my rows, why isn't that there? There is an operator for you. Um, I just didn't use in this use case, um, but you can use the table check or custom SQL check to really implement whatever you want um, in terms of your operator. So you can, don't be afraid if your specific uh, check isn't here. You, know, you can design that and add it in. So after we've done that, we're gonna set some common variables uh, that we're gonna use a few times. So our Postgres default connection ID, so we'll set this in the UI later. Um, as well as the table name we're going to be uh, checking and the schema we'll be using within our Postgres database. Um, and so from there, we're all set. So we can start building our actual DAG. Um, so here, just normal DAG declaration. We're gonna use some default args to actually pass our Postgres connection ID uh, into the various tasks so that we don't have to worry about just adding that to every single task, saving us some time. Um, and then what we'll do is within our DAG, just kind of create a first dummy task, just saying, hi, uh, you know, nothing really important here, but just to have a task to actually start out with before we start creating a temporary database uh, for our data quality checks. And so then what we're gonna do is actually create a task group to kind of store all of this in. Um, so here we have our task group create table because we're going to be creating a table um, and then inserting some data into it and then performing quality checks on the table before um, deleting the temporary table. Um, so this is using setup teardown tasks to run data quality checks efficiently where those temporary resources aren't going to be living after that they've been used. Um, so saving you costs on you know, your database storage. So after we've created our task group, we'll then create our first task. And so our first task we're gonna have is a Postgres operator um, just to create a temporary table. So here, SQL create table if not exists, um, table name underscore temp. Um, and then I have my task group here because I'm gonna create another task group or it's within my create table task group. Then what I'm going to have is my load data into temporary table. So all we're gonna be doing here is just taking that force fire CSV that I put in my include directory earlier 
and loading it into a Postgres uh, database, you know, just to simulate how you would normally load a CSV file in your database, right? So here we're creating a temp table um, with the table name that we set up here. So you're gonna notice this appear a lot of times, national parks, uh, copy it from our include, use the CSV uh, header and delimiter of a comma, because uh, it's called a CSV, right? Uh, and then insert into uh, dot underscore temp, select, um, and then just some conflict rules. So now we have uh, got our data loaded. You can perform some data quality checks on it, right? So here we're gonna do is actually create another task group, um, which is going to be within this other task group, uh, which is gonna be test temporary. So here we're going to test those columns um, to make sure there's no null values in the acres column. Um, so this is a data quality check. Hey, make sure if it's not a full acre, we don't care about it, right? Um, then we have the SQL table check operator, row count check, and this is what I was talking about, even though it's not called a row check, you can still perform row checks um, and check that the count is, of all of them is greater than 30. So make sure that your table is larger than 30 rows. Then after we're done with that, we will go out of this task group um, and actually create a new table um, that is going to be kind of a swap uh, from our temp table into a backup. So uh, one second. So here we have our swap Postgres operator. Um, so bringing our intake table into a backup, um, creating a table, a temporary table of our uh, checked information, um, then dropping the backup table. Now that our information is stored in that temp table. Um, then we're going to say, hey, our new table is ready with that clean and check data. So your data quality checks have been passed. Um, and then we're going to create a chain, just chaining all of those different tasks together. Um, so here we have drop TMP. Why is that not there? Um, it's because we haven't. Oh, there we go. Yes, yeah, sorry. I forgot to include the drop TMP. Uh, task. So we're also going to drop the temp table too, just to show you, hey, you know, you don't need your temp table anymore. Um, and then what we can do is define our setup teardown relationships. You notice that when I was defining the tasks, I actually didn't define a setup teardown relationship um, that, let me just actually delete this because I want to move it back so it's not within the context of that task group. So I think it is right now, right? Let's see. Hmm. Never mind. I'm just a little finicky this morning. Um, so here, drop TMP, drop backup, uh, new tables ready. And then after all that is done, we'll define our set of teardown tasks. Uh, and like I was saying before, you don't define these at the, when you're defining the task, you'll actually define them later. So you can say, Hey, after my drop TMT table will only run, or is going to run no matter what, um, as long as the setup of creating that temporary table and loading data in there, um, has been completed. And then my drop backup task is happening. So after I have created a table, so my new table that isn't called backup from my temporary table, it's from selecting all, then drop that backup because we don't need it anymore. Um, so this is just, might seem a little nonsensical here because it's just like a very an isolation example, but when you're in production, this, you know, when you're actually loading into another database, um, then, then this makes a lot more sense. Um, so here, you know, we're, we have our setup. So after that swap is completed, so we'll only run if that swap has completed successfully, um, it'll drop that back up. And also, uh, no matter if anything happens in between those two tasks. And once we look at this in the DAG view, I think it'll also make a little bit more sense. Um, so then after we uh, have run our basic data quality checks, we're also going to create another task group that is going to run some more advanced ones. Um, so here if we go. Uh, create another task group, validate. So here we are again going to validate that none of our park names are equal to zero um, and that our row count is greater than 50. So doing additional data quality checks, you know, just kind of wanted to simulate doing initial data step if you need to and how you can have kind of groupings of data quality checks to go down the line if you need to, you know, have certain standard, maybe it meets a standard, but it doesn't meet the standard, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then what we'll do is just to create our downstream task. Um, we've set swap after validate. Um, so it'll run after we swapped it. And then add this at task. Um, we're defining that downstream task just to run after all this is completed. Uh, upstream task, create table, downstream task. So uh, our create table, uh, even though it's kind of a misnomer, because um, it is just an all encompassing term for this task that's going to uh, comprise all of our Postgres operations instead of teardown tasks. So 
now we've got our DAG built out. Let's spin up this environment. We'll run Astro Dev Start, and then while it kicks up, I'll move over to the UI and show you uh, running through it live. All right, and so here we are within my DAG run view. So I just had to set something up with the Postgres database. So actually, before I go back, so the way you set up your Postgres connection, um, if you want to use the free environment, uh, so this is just using my local Postgres. I'm putting on point. 4533, but it can also be on port 5432 by default, and everything is just Postgres, Postgres all the way down. Um, and then if we go back to the UI, sorry, not a blank screen. Um, here we can see our data quality checks run. So, you know, creating the table within uh, National Parks and then running our SQL uh, quality checks on it. So, here if we go down, you can see I have my rows affected. So, all uh, tests have passed, my null check. None of these have zero acres, so none of them make no sense. And then also making sure that our row checks have passed. Um, so really simple implementation, but with a lot of really great results. Um, if you're struggling with data quality, you want to be able to check it in an automated manner. Um, this is a way for you, especially if you're using Postgres. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed. Um, and data guy out. Have a good one.